marvellous, absolutely marvellous. Not all elderly people are in need of safeguarding, but it is estimated that 500,000 older people face abuse each year in the UK. Safeguarding is everybody's business. You'll need to recognize the signs, respond appropriately to them, record what you saw and did, and refer them on so that they can get the help and support they need. Can you help me? GPs and surgery staff are uniquely placed to recognise adults who are being abused. After all, the elderly frequently call on the services of the doctor. Thank you. Bye-bye. Abuse is a violation of an individual's human or civil rights by any other person or persons. It may be perpetrated as the result of ignorance, negligence or deliberate intent. Elder abuse can be defined as a single or repeated act or lack of appropriate action occurring within any relationship where there is an expectation of trust which causes harm or distress to an older person. Elder abuse can take many forms, such as physical. Do as you're told, otherwise I'll put you in a KOL. Psychological or emotional, sexual, or even financial abuse. Sign it. It can also be the result of intentional or unintentional neglect. Of course, abusers of the elderly and vulnerable come from all walks of life, like Rachel Baker, a care home manager found guilty of manslaughter. Ah, oh, yes, I remember that case. She was stealing drugs intended for patients to feed her own addiction, and then she gave an overdose to 92-year-old Lucy Cox. The Care Act 2014 required local authorities to establish safeguarding adult boards. These are referred to as an SAB. Now, their purpose is to help and protect adults who have needs for care and support, are experiencing abuse, neglect, or are at risk of abuse and neglect. And as a result of their needs, are unable to protect himself or herself against the abuse, neglect, or risk of it. Excuse me, could I borrow a match? I use a lighter. Better still. Until they go wrong. Of course, information has to be handed carefully. There is a duty of confidence, a presumption between members of the public and health practitioners, without which many individuals might be reluctant to share private or sensitive information. However, absolute guarantee of confidentiality should never be given. There are times when the law and or good practice require information to be shared. The sun has set over London skies. We once met. How time flies. Professional sharing information about an individual are at the heart of multidisciplinary and multi-agency work. However, confidential information should only be passed on a need-to-know basis. She really is quite wicked. She hits me. Tell me what happens. It's important when somebody is disclosing not to contaminate the evidence. Don't ask close questions or push the person for more detail. Allow them to speak freely and without interruption. 
consider the possibility of forensic evidence and always consult the police in cases where a crime may have taken place. Remain calm and try not to show shock or disbelief. Listen very carefully to what was said. Reassurance. I want to be reassured that I'm doing the right thing and that you will take the information I give you seriously. And that the abuse is not mine. And of course, a GP must make a written record of what was said. George Harrison, so room four. George. Where's Margaret? Mum's not with us anymore, Dad. My dad's getting worse. He's getting more forgetful, confused. George. When it comes to mental health, there's a difficult balancing act to perform. Listening to the patient and considering their views whilst also considering the safeguarding issues that are raised. Are you taking the medication you've been prescribed? Where's Margaret? One of the considerations for the doctor is whether the patient is able to make decisions. There is a two-stage test for mental capacity. Is there an impairment or disturbance of the mind in the functioning of the patient's brain? And is that impairment or disturbance sufficient for them to be unable to make a particular decision? George. Dad, the doctor's talking to you. I need to assess the ability of your dad to understand the information. Is he able to retain the information long enough to make a decision? The doctor will also need to explore whether George is able to use or weigh that information as part of the decision-making process and then assess if he is able to communicate his decision. There is no universal test for capacity. The greater the complexity of the decision, the greater the mental capacity required to make it. Not all adults need safeguarding, but let's make sure for those that do, they get the support and the protection that they need.